Um, we're uh, very pleased that you guys can make it out here for our uh, dance demonstrations. Uh, my name is Shane Across the Mountain. I come from the Blood Tribe. Uh, I'll be your MC. Um, what we uh, what we are doing is uh, we we have these dance demonstrations to uh, because of COVID. You know, uh, we used to have a powwow here, but because of COVID, we can't have the we don't haven't had a powwow. We're hoping next year we could, uh, but we have these dance demonstrations, and uh, the whole point of these is just to bridge that gap between our two communities. You know, and uh, this is a prime example of uh, one of the best ways that we can do it. You know, uh, what we what we're doing is uh, we brought. We brought the powwow here for you guys. You know, we have some of the top dancers, and we have the drummers here, you know. And uh, we hope that you guys enjoy yourselves, you know. And uh, I hope that you guys take a little bit back of what what you guys will learn today, you know. I, uh, before each dance starts, I, I give a little, a little history on what each dance represents, you know. And... You know, I hope you guys uh, can take back a little bit of what what you guys learned today. You know, um, when we do these, you know, we we follow the uh, powwow protocol very closely. You know, like this morning, before we started our morning performance, we had a uh, morning prayer. You know, and that prayer covers us through the throughout the day. So, you know, and um, then we had some. Uh, some opening remarks, and I think uh, I'll just have uh, I'll have one person come up and speak, you know, because uh, we have all the dancers all ready, and you guys are all ready too. So um, before we f before we start, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had our uh, annual celebration on the reserve, you know, and we had our powwow, you know, we had. Uh, I think we had like over 800 dancers and we had like 27 drum groups, you know. And there was a lot of, there was a big payout, you know. And uh, we, we crowned three princesses at our powwow. We have a uh, Kainai senior princess, and then we have the Kainai junior princess, and then the Kainai tiny top princess. And the uh, princess we have with us today is uh, our Kainai Junior Princess. Her name is Hayden Plum. So I'm gonna have her come up here and introduce herself and say a few words. Okay, Pendleton, Oregon. Samuels. Nino honest of a white fire plume. No oxa honest of Jim and Darlene Plume. Hello, my name is Hayden Plume. I'm a proud member of the Blood Tribe, Umatilla Tribe, Walla Walla, Ne Walla Walla Cayuse, and Nez Perce Tribe. My mom is Harry Sampson Samuels. My dad is a white clay plume, and my grandma and grandpa are Jim and Darlene Plume. I am so honored to be here today to represent my crown and my culture. I hope you have fun. Get them with some. Have it. It's a gobby day. Thank you. Thank you, Hayden. You know we have uh, we have some of the top dancers here. You know also our our singers here. You know you can't have a powwow without our drummers. You know and uh, today I have um, my brother here, Buford Platted here. You know me and Buford we've been singing together ever since we were both knee high to a grasshopper. And uh, I have my two nephews here, Quaid and Cody, you know, and um, my nephew over here, Quaid, not only is he a chicken dancer, but he's only 11 years old and he has his own drum group. And uh, they, they've traveled throughout the powwow country, you know, representing, you know, the, the tribe. You know, and uh, they get invited to a lot of powwows, you know, and, you know, I'm very proud that, you know, to call him my nephew because 
he grew up around a drum, you know, he grew up when, before he can even walk, he was already trying to sing, before he can even talk, he was trying to sing, you know, and, uh, you know, it's really good to see him with his group, you know, he's got boys from all over Indian country, he even has boys from Kansas and Arizona that join him, you know, and, um, you know, my brother here, Arnold, my sister, Bianca, you know, they're the ones that are bringing him all over. Just this past weekend in Bikani, his drum group, they sponsored the championship jackets and the drumsticks for the first place champions in the drumming contest. So that was really awesome to see, you know, and for him to uh, give back to the powwow like that because that powwow was was the first time that his drum group set up, you know, Baby Flats is what they're called. You know, now, you know, they're getting called all over to do all different types of gigs, you know. And, uh, you know, that's really awesome, you know, that they're, for them to be that young, to start to get back into our ways, you know. And then we have Charlie over here, you know, he's a little fancy dancer, you know, and. It's good to see the young ones, you know. What I, what, when, I, when I gather up all the, the dancers, you know, I try to mix it up. I try to use as much youth as I can. So we have a lot of youth dancers here. And then um, I got my, my brothers over here singing. So, um, so with that, I think we're just going get right, to get right into, into the dance demonstration part. So the first dancer I want to call up is our women's traditional, and that's uh, Bianca Mountain Horse. You know this style of dance it uh, signifies, you know, our the gracefulness of our women. You know, these were, like I said, these are our mothers, these are our grandmothers. You know, and prior to uh, World War Two. They weren't allowed to dance inside the circle with all the men, all the other dancers. But after World War II, because of the, the, the amount of women that were entered into the armed forces, you know, they were finally allowed to dance inside the circle with the men. You know, and uh, this is just a graceful style of dancing, you know, and this is my sister here, Bianca Mountain Horse, so with that, I'll call on our drummers here to sing a traditional dance song.
Put your hands together. That was our women's traditional. Okay, moving right along, we're going to call on our uh, women's fancy. And uh, the dancer we have with us today is uh, Kayla Bird. This style of dance, uh, fairly new to the powwow circuit. Um, what it is, it's, uh, it's the female counterpart to our, our men's fancy, you know. Uh, this style dance, you know, it uh, also has a very fast drum beat to it, you know, and uh, what uh, what she's symbolizing when she's dancing with her shawl um, is she's imitating the flight of a butterfly as it's going over the, over the ground, you know, and um, so uh, this style of dance, you know, like I said, fairly, fairly new to the powwow, powwow circuit, but uh, we're going to call in our drummers here for a uh, fancy dance song. Beautiful, good, good dance in there, Kayla. Okay, uh, we're just gonna keep moving along here. We have our two uh, jingle dress dancers. You know, we have uh, Justice uh, Young Pine and uh, Hayden Plum. This style of dance comes to us uh, from down east, from the Anishinaabe people. This is a healing dance. You know, and um, the style, the dance, even the the songs that go with it. This style of dance was shown. It was shown to a uh, to a guy in in a dream. His granddaughter was sick, and uh, he prayed about his granddaughter. And then uh, he was shown this dance. Uh, even the songs that go with it. Um, the original jingle dress was supposed to have 365 cones on there to represent one day of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, nowadays at the powwows, you know, you have a lot of the, a lot of people that are sick, they call on the jingle dress dancers because it's a healing dance. You know, they, they bring the, the person that's sick out into the middle of the dance floor and then they have the jingle dress dancers form a big circle, you know, and it's an awesome sight to see. You have all these jingle dress dancers you know, and then they start dancing, and then it helps to heal that person and the community. You know, one powwow I went to, I seen that happen. They wheeled the guy out in the middle of the dance floor in the wheelchair. They had the jingle dress come out. They circled him, and uh, they started dancing. By the time this, the song ended, the guy in the wheelchair, he got up out of the wheelchair, and he started dancing, dancing to the beat of the drum. You know, so that shows that this style of dance has a lot of healing power, you know. And uh, so with that, you know, we're going to sing a, uh, I have the boys here sing a jingle dress song.
Beautiful dancing. Give him a round of applause. That was Justice Young Pine and Hayden Plum, our jingle dress. Okay, now moving into the men's categories. We're gonna, I'm going to call up our men's traditional dancer. And our traditional dancer we have here is uh, Bruce Mistaken Chief from the Blood Tribe. You know, he's traveled throughout Powwow country representing the tribe. You know, um, this style of dance, you know, these... These are our warriors. Uh, these are the protectors of the tribe. You know, as he's dancing, he, what he's doing is he's telling a story. These are our storytellers. You know, they're, they're, he's telling the story of his many accomplishments that he's had made throughout his life. You know, and um, we're just going to get to it and get the, the song going. So anytime, boys. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. That is our men's traditional. Um, now we're going to call on our uh, fancy dance. And uh, we have here uh, my nephew, Antoine, many fingers. And we have his little brother here, Charlie. You know, Antoine just started dancing about a year and a half ago, I'd, I'd say. You know, and... Uh, Already, he's becoming one of the top teen dancers on the powwow circuit. You know, every powwow he goes to, he's placing. You know, and um, we got his little brother here, Charlie. You know, also he's uh, he just started dancing too. You know, and he's he's in the junior boys category. You know, and we have you know their their regalia here. They have their their two bustles. And then they have their, uh, what they're holding right here in their hands uh, is what they call a coup stick. This uh, style of dance comes from Oklahoma, down in, uh, around from the Ponca people. This is a war dance. And what they do with the coup stick is they get close to their enemies and they hit their enemies with that. They're counting coup on their enemies. So that's why they carry the two coup sticks there. You know, and this is a very, very fast, fast and fancy beat, you know. You, uh, you have, you'll see guys, you know, that are doing cartwheels out there, doing splits at the end of the songs, you know. The more fancy your, your moves are, the more uh, points you can get, you know, when you're getting judged, you know. Um, so with that, you know, I'll call on the boys here to sing a uh, southern a uh, men's fancy dance song.
Awesome, awesome dancing. Okay, uh, now um, the dancers that we're gonna bring out now, you know, this this dance that it's coming up, you know, it's our prairie chicken dance. And uh, we have uh, our two dancers here. We have uh, uh, Braylon Sweetgrass over here. And then we have Quaid Mountain Horse, you know. This this dance here, it originates right from here, from the Blackfoot Confederacy, you know, the Six of Gates, it up the, you know, this is uh, one of the dances that us as Blackfoot people are very proud of because this is where it comes from. This is the home of the chicken dance, you know, and uh, this dance, you know, becoming very popular on the powwow trail you know you got dancers coming from all over indian country to to learn this style of dance and to dance it you know just uh in june we had uh they had uh up in six just uh east of uh calgary they had uh um a world championship chicken dance you know and there was i think over 500 chicken dancers there, you know, and from all different parts of Indian country, you know, and uh, dancing a, a style that originated from here in the, on the Blackfoot territory. You know, this dance here, I remember growing up, up at a Sundance, our, our ceremony, um, there used to be a, a society, it was known as the Kitoki Society, they would start off our annual Sundance. They would dance. After they were done dancing, and then our 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 ceremony would start. You know, we we haven't had that society on the reserve for a long time. You know, up in Six of God, they still have that society. But uh, this style of dance, uh, what they're doing is they're imitating the mating dance of a prairie chicken. You know, and. Uh, um, it's it's a real awesome sight to see when you have all these chicken dancers, you know. Also, there's different, it's a different beat that goes for this dance. And um, so we have here, uh, we have here Quaid and uh, Braylon. So they're going to be performing the chicken dance. So with that, boys, here we go.
awesome dance in their voice. You know, um, you know, like I said earlier, you can't have a powwow without a drum group. So, you know, my brother here, Buford, you know, we've been singing for a long time. And then my nephew, Quaid, and my other brother over here, Leland, you know, we uh, sometimes we set up at a powwow, you know, and we, we, we set up at a powwow just, just, just to have fun, just to go and sing, you know. And, um, you know, the, when it comes to uh, competition, you know, a lot of these dancers here, you know, they, what happens at a competition powwow is they get judged. They have judges that come out and they judge the dancers. And then not only the dancers, but also the drum group gets judged too. And a lot of times, the drum group, uh, they, it's just a spur of the moment kind of thing. They, they have no idea who they're singing for, what category. So a lot of times, you know, the drums have to be ready at all times, you know. And, uh, Especially with the big competition powwows, you know, and you know, there's a lot of prize money that's that they're competing for. You know, a lot of people I know, they make they make their living doing this. They make their living doing powwow. You know, they're uh, placing at all the powwows. You know, and that's uh, that's how a lot of them, you know, get their make their living. You know, but uh, I'm really glad that. We were able to come out and do this. So before we end things off, you know, I want to get all the dancers out here. You know, what we're going to do is what they call an intertribal. You know, we have uh, at the powwow an intertribal is when we have all the dancers out, you know, and they're dancing. It's a really awesome sight to see, you know, with all the different colors, um, the, the sounds, you know, the bells, the jingles, you know. Um, the drum, you know, the songs that are being sung, you know, and uh, what they're wearing uh, is what we we like to call, we, we call them regalia because they're not costumes. I know a lot of people call them costumes, but they're not costumes, you know. If you want a costume, go buy a costume at the, at the costume shop. You know, these are, these, these are, um, handmade, you know, and it takes, it takes months to get these done, you know, and a lot, of, there's not one design that's the same on the dancers, you know, you can have 800 dancers out there, not one design is the same, you know, and because all these designs, they, they're for the individual, you know, that they, their designs that they, they came up with, you know, but it takes a lot of time and energy to make these dancing regalia, you know. My sister over here, Bianca, you know, she knows all about that, you know. I, every time I talk to her, you know, she's making outfits for different dancers, you know, and it takes a lot of time, you know, and, uh, but uh, these are regalia, so when you come up to a dancer, you know, ask them, is it okay if I take a picture of you in your regalia because they're not costumes, you know, and uh, our drummer's here, you know, um take it takes a lot you know to to drum and sing you know because our songs are not written down you know we don't have a songbook all our songs we are up here you know and we have to remember them you know and when we get called upon as a singer you know we we need to know those songs right off the bat you know and uh it takes uh well a lot of this you know was a creator's gift to us, you know. Like, I have brothers, you know, that don't sing, but, you know, I sing, you know, it's a, it's a gift that creator gave to me, you know. And I, I like to share that gift, you know. And uh, like my nephew here, Quaid, you know, I, he's been around us his whole life, you know, now he's uh, one of the top singers, you know, and Arnold there, you know. <coughs> so with that, you know, I want to call all the, the dancers out here, and we'll have a uh, intertribal.
Put your hands together. Well, that was uh, that was a little taste of what you would expect at a powwow. You know, I want to thank uh, thank everybody for for joining us here this afternoon. You know, and uh, we uh, we have one more day tomorrow. You know, uh, another day of dance demonstrations. You know, and it's all part of the Cards and Heritage Days. You know, and um, before before we before I sign off, I wanna I wanna call up an individual. You know, and uh, um, I wanna call up our mayor, Maggie Cronin. You know. She's sitting over there looking all comfortable, you know. But, uh, you know, I I do a lot of work with the town of Cardson, you know, and with Maggie. Also with uh, Paula Brown over here, my good friend, you know, and uh, Tim Court, you know. And, you know, it's really good, you know, to that I'm able to work alongside them. So here's uh, the mayor. Thank you so much, Shane. And uh, thank you to all of you who came here. Were you entertained this afternoon? Thank you. Did you enjoy the show? <laughs> Did you learn something? Perfect. If you learn, you were entertained, you enjoyed the show, we accomplished what we were there to do. Thank you, Shane. Thank you to all the drummers and singers. And thank you to all of you wonderful dancers. So appreciated to have all this put together by Councillor Brown, thank you, and by Shane. Those two work together remarkably well to bring this wonderful cultural event to our town. So thank you so much for your hard work. And I really appreciate those powers. From the day I was on council, I asked to be put on a power committee because I really realized when I came in 2008 that there was a lot of work to be done between our two community, communities to be able to come to understand each other better and tolerate each other and learn to love each other. It takes work. It takes a vision. And that vision was once formulated by the late councillor from the Blood Tribe, Oliver Shouting. I had the chance to work with him to come to know that extraordinary man. And he had a vision. His vision was to bring our communities together. Together, we could bridge the gap that is really represented by a highway. We can come to understand each other's community, learn to put our prejudices aside, and start to work together for the benefit of all people and our next generations. Our, our young people are getting so much better at it than we are. They are so much more willing to work with each other. And I really think those powers are there to help us understand how important it is to appreciate the difference in the cultural uh, settings that we have around us. It makes us rich in culture and appreciation for each other. I really love to see that come to fruition. There is a lot of work that has been done in those past 13 and a half years that I've been on council. There's a lot more to do, but we're moving forward with great hope for the next generation so thank you to all of you for being here and supporting us in that effort. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for those words. You know, like like Mayor said, you know, we're bridging that gap, you know, and this is the best way that we can do it. You know, and uh, I want to thank you guys. You know, I want to thank our, uh, our friends here at the... Uh, the carriage, the carriage museum, for allowing us to come inside here, you know, and uh, because of the rain, you know, hopefully tomorrow it's a nice day so we can be dancing outside again, you know. And on behalf of uh, the drummers here, 
and the dancers, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you guys for joining us here, you know, and I hope you guys all learned a little something, it took something in, and, uh, you know, it, it gives you that better understanding, you know, of, uh, of our people, you know, like the mayor said, is this that highway over here that separates us, you know, and it's not a big highway too, you know, it, so, um, with that, you know, I want to thank you guys, you know, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and if you're visiting here in Carson, I hope you guys are enjoying the Heritage Days, you know, I know there's a parade coming up on Saturday, you know, and I believe there's a rodeo too, so with that, we have the singers and the drummers, I want to thank you guys for coming, and I want to say, Gato Matsin. <laughs>